Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Frozen Fortunes. We've had a very, very interesting few games. But before we get into anything else, because it is Tuesday, it's time to thank new patrons, and this week it is Folks. So seriously, mate, that is incredible. And once again, just it's I'm so thankful uh, for you guys doing that. You don't have to. It's just incredibly generous. So thank you, and to all of you that watch the videos. I know I say it every week, but I am really just want to make you know how thankful I am for that. So anyway, let's get into things. Now we played our game in the cup against recently relegated from the top flight AC Horsens, and we smashed them six nil. Um, didn't expect this, but we thoroughly deserved it. They had 16 shots, and not a single one of them hit the damn target. They did have some chances. They could have maybe had a goal or two, but we were just in. Serious. Bravo with four goals, one for Steven Gardner, and Dan Yazzi came off the bench, and I think he got two assists um, and a goal to his name. And Dan Yazzi has really been the man of the moment for us over the past few games this month. It's a snazzy Yazzi month, and I'm very pleased for him. The reasoning behind bringing Yazzi in is that he'd already got eight goals in his first five games for the B team, and I felt, you know what, if he's good enough for the B team, he's good enough to get a chance in the A team in the cup, and he proved it. Um... The reason I played the full strength side against Horsens, even though we didn't really need to, was because there was a 10 day gap between that game and this game. And I thought, you know what, we might as well smash it in the cup and see how far we can go this year. But I was going to plan on rotating from now on. Um, we came into the game against Lingby, probably one of our more winnable games that we'd had, despite them playing quite well. And um, unfortunately, this was a game that was just full of injuries. You might only see two injuries for us in this game, but we actually had four. Um, <laughs> we had to make all three of our substitutions within the first 29 minutes of this game. Uh, which was not ideal. Augustine gave us the lead early on with a Yazzi assist as well, I believe. Um, and then the injuries, well, when they started, Gaston Garcia went off. He broke his hand. Uh, David Coutinho went out. In fact, I've got a list here. Garcia broke his hand. Coutinho pulled ankle ligaments. These were all long-term injuries. Uh, Perez twisted his ankle and Augustine pulled his hamstring all in the same game, uh, which meant we actually finished the game with 10 men. But it wasn't to stop us getting that goal late on with Dan Yazzie. He got an assist and a goal in this game and probably rescued us um, from what would have been a pretty poor defeat against a a side we should really maybe be beating. I don't know. Mark Amram killed her with the goal and Brewer Bloom with a goal. But a point, I guess, isn't too bad when you consider the amount of injuries. The problem was injuries. Against Vela, who were actually doing all right at the time. We had them at home and we finally got a win against a team that we probably should be beating at home. And to be fair, we've, we played pretty well in this period, still scoring goals, but looking a lot better in games. They didn't really create a great deal. They had a lot of long shots and that was about it. Dan Yazzie with a goal and I'm pretty certainly got at least one assist in this game too. A pair of goals for Steven Gardner and Jonas Svenningsson who came off the bench to replace Bravo after he had to limp off injured, which was not ideal, but I don't think he actually missed a full game. So that's not too bad. Nicholas uh, Rocher is the top scorer in the league at the moment, I believe as well and he got two more against us today so they've clearly got a talent there at Vela. Let me get through these game recaps a little bit quicker just to save time but also because we've had a few more games than I expected this month. Against BK Avata I decided to rotate the entire team uh, because they're a third tier side and I figured we could probably get past them. We maybe could have had a couple more goals in this game. Uh, Saman Zahidi is a new Afghani striker who you'll be hearing more about in a minute because uh, he will be featuring in the first team but this was his first proper start for us. Scored a goal and our young Croatian Ivan Peric who's been doing well in the B team got the other one. We did bring a couple of the other lads off the bench like Yusuf Torre who came on and had a lovely time uh, just to get us through to the fourth round which is what the board wanted so we can kind of chill at that point there. Next up was probably one of the most ridiculous games of football I've seen on Football Manager and I feel like I've said that more than once this season but honestly it is true we played away at Kurga, who were bottom of the table they had just won their last game but I think that might have been their first or second win of the season and they just blitzed us straight out the gate they were 3-0 up in this game inside 17 minutes and I was bloody worried not gonna lie uh, but then we just started pushing Bravo got one back Bravo got another one back through the penalty which I think Svenningson actually won uh, he then had a goal I believe wrongly this allowed for half to, uh, half time uh, so we should have been 3-0 3-3 uh, at half time but then in the second half Sergi Santos with a lovely bending effort and then Saman Zahidi off the bench I think I can't even remember we've had as many changes gave us the win here what a turnaround 3-0 down to 4-3 winners and most importantly it was another three points now our league position is definitely uh, boosted by this of course but I feel like it's a bit of a false one because we've played a lot of games against the teams around us and to be fair we've got wins uh, which is all you really can do but I do feel like it will start to drop again once we face some of the better sides again and I kind of hoped we would continue that run into the game against Esbjerg but once again um, we conceded the first two goals and it was all second half stuff here Steven Groen got two in five minutes to put us 2-0 down and I was kind of worried Esbjerg normally play that 4-3-3 system and I noticed from the analysis that they had in virtually every game but they decided not to against us which was very annoying because I felt like we probably could have 
had taken them. Um, Steven Gardner and then Dan Yazzie off the bench again. He got an assist and a goal off the bench in this game. Yazzie is looking snazzy again. Um, but then we immediately turn around and Simon Tubek uh, made it 3-2 to Esbjerg. And we, our run of little, our little run of unbeatenness finally came to an end at home to Esbjerg, uh, which is a shame because that was probably more winnable than some of the other games we've had as they were 12th in the league at the time. But that's how it is. And all that leaves the league looking like this. We are in 8th place. I'm staggered by it, to be perfectly honest. Uh, Kurga have picked up a couple of results now, and Randers, one of our opponents today, and Silkeborg. Ironically, we've, we've actually got to play 12th and 13th in our games today. There's a real chance that if we can put a couple of wins together, we could maybe um, get ourselves in a very good position, and I believe that after today's game, the television money gets paid, or the prize money gets paid out for the first stage in the league. I don't know how much it is, but you've got to feel that it's going to be more than what we were getting last year. So even if we finish, like, 11th overall, I don't really care uh, because we'd stay up firstly. But also, if we could just get a big bump of money in this first little one because of the way these fixtures have fallen, I would be ecstatic with that. Gardner top scorer with 12 goals. Best player overall in the league at the moment as well. He is playing above and beyond his abilities, to be perfectly honest, and I'm incredibly proud of him. Rogers Jr. got called up for the uh, USA national team under 20, so that is very interesting. This is Zahidi. He's an Afghani uh, striker, and I'm pretty pleased about that. It's cool to have a player from Afghanistan just in the team. It's pretty awesome. Um, decent dribbling, decent finishing, great composure. He's got good heading. He's five foot ten, but he's got... Uh, He's good in the air. Uh, he's just not great at getting there. But if he does get a header, he's got a good chance again. He's fairly professional. He's also got 14 pace and 16 acceleration. He is a nippy little boy. And um, I'm pretty pleased about that. Uh, his passing's a little bit on the low side. But I tell you what, getting him into those wing positions is very, very nice with the fact that he has got that sheer blistering pace. Fairly professional. I I'm pretty pleased with him. And I think he'll feature quite a bit for us. So we've signed him up to a contract, of course. Got 28 goals in 65 games for the Crew Academy. That says something to me. So... For today, though, Gardner and Bravo, obviously in the team. Also worth noting, Bravo now has fairly professional personality instead of fairly loyal. So again, something is changing with the squad stuff that's forcing these kind of things. But I think it's improving a lot of players, or it certainly seems like it. But he does still obviously have attributes that keep him fairly loyal to us. Uh, so hopefully that isn't going to affect that in the future. On this right-hand side... Um, I've also filtered it by availability so we don't get the work permit players appearing in here because uh, it's just getting confusing. We've got a lot of options, really. With Svenningsen, Zahidi, Yazzie... I'm tempted to go with Zahidi today, um, although for some reason, what on earth? There we go. Put, I'm going to give him a crack today because he's played quite well lately, but I also want to give Yazzie a run out as well. Ott and Santos, we've tried all sorts of things in the middle. Um, we've got so many options here. Coutinho is finally back and probably is the best bet for that, despite his fitness levels being a little bit low. Miranda, uh, he played in the last game because Rogers was overseas on international duty. Uh, Roland is he back yet. Augustine, he probably is, but I'll tell you what, he's dropping off the pace in terms of his... He's, oh no, he's there. So wait, Alejandro Perez. There we go. That's who we want in there. I'm worried about Augustine. I'm starting to think that maybe he might not be quite... Then again, he is good for that stopper role. Uh, well, I don't know. We might have to take a look at that since he's not really improving as much as other players. Kingsley Thomas, of course, played in place of Gaston Garcia. However... Uh, in fact, no, he's still the only player available. I have, we have got another goalkeeper come in. I think he's called a Nelson Castaneda. He's an American, but he hasn't actually signed the contract yet. So he can't play in today's game, but hopefully he can play against Silkeball. That's the plan, because I think he might actually be better than Gaston Garcia. Um, so we're going to give Kingsley Thomas a run out today as well, I think, unless Garcia can actually play. Now, his fitness levels aren't great. Then again, mm, I do trust Gaston more. On the bench, Kingsley Thomas, Lamari, uh, Traore, Yazzie, Roland, Ott, and Svenningsen. Yazzie and Svenningsen has only really not been put into the team full time just because of how well Yazzie's done when he's played and Zahidi's coming in now. It's a real battle for that right hand side and essentially it's going to go to the player who's in form. If they have a couple of poor games, they're out and we'll try someone else until someone really nails down that spot. And I'm quite happy to do that. Uh, team two, we're going to go assertive. Underdogs, lovely old job. Oh, it actually worked. Okay. It's either that or the, uh, the old we owe them one. So there we go. Right. Let's get into the game. Question of the day for today is, um, what is the favorite regen? This is one just from me. What is the favorite regen you've ever had on one of your saves? Now, for me, it's a fairly simple one. Uh, Norman Millington, or Sir Norman Millington, um, is right up there for me, along with Marcelo Di Placido, just because of his sheer uh, goal-scoring quality that he had in that Roma team of mine, uh, although he didn't really play that for that long. But he was still incredible. I think he was getting like a goal a game, if not even more. Um, so yeah, let me know your favorite regen that you've ever had on one of your saves. And if you have any ideas for a question of the day, drop those in the comments too with the hashtag QOTD. Also, let me know a bit, a bit about the stats and stuff like that. I want to kind of know who's got the best regen. So um, I don't know about this game. I, I feel like we should be good enough to... Whoa. I was about to say, we feel like we should be good enough to win this one, uh, given the way that they've started the season compared to us. But then we're a very hit and miss team these days. Coutinho does well. Ah, oh, hello. Here we go. Zahidi. Oh, 
That wasn't really the best example of him right there. <laughs> Santos with the ball in. It's not a bad cross, actually. And oh, safety around the side. We should close down Kluster as well, apparently. Right, maybe a chance for us now. They have got a booking. We've got a chance to throw a ball into the box. Stasia. Bravo. No, it's going to come back for Santos, though. And he's lost the ball immediately. Can he win it back or do something here? Nope. They're actually very good at this sort of breakaway stuff. They're not overcommitting bodies forward. And they're getting forward in the right way. Because, again, this... Look at this. Look at this. Oh, goodness sake. Like, the ball... He plays the ball here. And bear in mind, this is the guy that we've got them set to tight mark, close down more. You know the drill. And he's able to ghost all the way through and score when there's four defenders in the box. GG. Okay, moving on. Uh, it is already at the half an hour mark, so I guess it's safe to go on to a bit more of an attacking approach uh, for the rest of this game, since we've not really created anything worth talking about so far, to be perfectly honest. I would say it's like the Esbjerg game, but it's, it's kind of not. We actually created against them. This has just been bad. Gonna Muscutsa Bravo! Oh my god. Uh, that was a really difficult effort from him. I wasn't expecting that to go in. Rogers is having a dreadful game so far. Like, an absolutely shut us, better. He's <laughs> jumped a bit. We need to show something. We're only a goal down here, thankfully. Uh, and that is the one benefit about this, is that we are only one goal down. Moskutsa. Zahidi could get in behind, maybe. Mm. Yep. Yeah, that's good. Just brilliant. Loads of that. None of our strikers have really done anything in today's game, uh, to be fair. They're usually at least good at fashioning a chance or two for themselves. And they've just... Are you shitting me? Oh, he's offside. Okay. Phew. We're going to have to make some changes soon. I think the strike force is definitely going to be getting some, because... None of them have really made any impact on today's game. Why are you backing away from the ball? Right. Close down much more. What part of that means back away from the ball when it's lumped over? Uh, I think they've got quite a bad injury in the middle of the pitch now. Lawson. I.e. Means there's less players to... Fucking hell. <laughs> Augustine can't even reach the players. Right. Changes have got to be made. Zahidi's been woeful. We're going to give Yazzie a chance off the bench. Gardner's not been great either, so I'm going to get Svenningson in for him. And nobody really else that we can try and bring in at the moment. Everyone else is all right. Um, we just need something because our strike force has just underperformed very, very poor today, uh, which is a rarity when you can think that we've scored in, I think, every single league game so far we've scored in. To not do it today would be a travesty because they're not even a very good side. You know, they are, what, second from bottom of the league? Gardner, um, he hasn't actually made the substitutions yet. We're winning the headers, but the second balls just aren't falling for us at the moment. Alan said, oh, okay. That's oh, for goodness sake. Oh, what a save from Garcia, keeping us in the game. We are a shambles at the moment. Coutinho's ball in. Headed away to Bravo. Can we just get something going here? Coutinho, that's too deep for him, surely. No, oh, that's, that's not too bad, actually. Svenningsen! Oh, for goodness sake, it's off the post. I mean, to be fair, we don't deserve a goal the way we've played so far. But if we get one, I'll take it. We're going to go overload. We're going to take more risks. Let's, let's have this. Um, there's a goal. In, you know, they're only one goal up. There's a goal in this game. Oh, for goodness sake. Defenders are not going to get there. This is a goal. No, well done, Garcia, keeping them out. They've deserved the win in this match so far, to be perfectly honest. We've not been good enough to do that, but I would like to see us score a goal and keep that record of scoring in every single game so far this season uh, going. That would be quite nice, and particularly as it would earn us a point in a game that we perhaps don't deserve one. Coutinho. Right, Svenningsen's in this time. He's got a player in the box. Bravo is the man. Yazzi! Oh, my goodness me. That was a great strike from Dan Yazzi. Another chance for us. Just lump one in. We'll find somebody on the end of it eventually. Coutinho! Oh, my God. Rogers now. He's going to get outnumbered in the corner, but we have at least won a throw-in. Uh, yeah, Coutinho is looking knackered. We'll get Ott on for the final few moments of this game. See if he can find something for us um, in the final four moments. Just has got a bit more combustibility in that midfield. Scott, right, go. Go, 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 go. Bravo. He's got men over. He has to find his man over. Dan Yazzie, 1-1. One, one. Dan Yazzie at the far post. And my God, he's pulled us out the bag there again. Mariano Bravo with the cross... And Dan Yazzie off the bench at the far post to equalise in the 94th minute of the game. I thought this was done. I thought Bravo had taken it way too wide and he's just dug this one out. Yazzie's just about onside on the full volley. 1-1 and we have somehow pulled out an equaliser here against the run of play. I don't think we've deserved it, to be honest. The way we've played in today's game has been downright dreadful in places and we don't... Oh God. <laughs> I thought they were about to go and put one in at the other end, but we have got the equaliser. Um... I suppose it's a point away from home. So I guess we can't be too annoyed about that. It's just, we just didn't play very well uh, in places in this game. Aldo Safi had an excellent game though, um, but just the strikers weren't creating enough. But we got the point. Whew. 
Oh my god, that is great. And I don't know where that's going to put us in the league, um, but hopefully we'll get a bit of money for it. Seventh. That's not too bad. Right then, guys, we are back on the day of the game against Silkeborg. Now, um, something I just wanted to quickly check, because also I'm an idiot, because I didn't realize that the, I believe, the payment for prize money is paid out after the 13th fixture, because of course there's more teams in this league. So I got a little bit confused about that one. So it's actually today's game, which means we could in fact get higher than seventh. Maybe. Um, that does require us to win today. And uh, we can't play, surely we can't play as badly as we did in the last game. We got very lucky to get a point in that game. It goes without saying. But also something I noticed is that we get different amounts of money for certain games. So when you look at the schedule, you can see that for some games, we've been given £20,000, but for some games, it's £31,000 for TV. But it's not to do with the home or away. So does anyone know why that is? So based on the performance that we had in the last game, I'm going to drop Zahidi from today's match and bring in Dan Yazzie. It seems like the guy rescued us, um, and it's not the first time that he's done that or done well for us. So I think there's no reason not to give him a start today. I feel like he's great off the bench. He's a great super sub to have, but maybe so Zahidi, you know, good against with tired legs, uh, against tired legs rather. So not too bad on that front. Also, I think our other goalkeeper, yeah, Castaneda is now available to play in that role. Uh, maybe not today to get his match fitness up with some uh, reserve games just yet, but he might be one that we could potentially slowly start rolling out uh, to replace Gaston Garcia because Garcia isn't really improving that much, to be perfectly honest. So on the bench, Castaneda, I guess, uh, Roland, Traore, uh, Angel Gonzalez, Ruddy, Svenningson, and Zahidi. So a couple of good strikers options off the bench. Gardner has to play better than he did in the last game. Uh, he, he was woeful in places as well. Both of them were. Uh, Yazzie bailed us out massively in that game. I can't believe we really didn't deserve that point. Well, we've had an interesting run of games. The, the defeat at home to Esbjerg when they were 12th was a game we should have won. Away at Randers when they're 13th is a game that we maybe should have won, uh, but on paper we didn't, like on paper, but in terms of the game, we didn't deserve it. And today is another one that we should be winning um but it's weird we've actually done better against some of the harder teams to play against but we have still scored in every single game so far this season thanks to my man dan yazzy hopefully we can do them proud today and hopefully dan yazzy can continue his excellent performances like he's probably not even our fifth or sixth best striker in terms of star rating and whatnot but when he plays he scores and assists goals i, I can't really look past that and if anyone's going to hold down that position it's going to be a player that does those two things to be perfectly honest Laris, although we do have to watch out for crosses. That, that's the key thing. It's just... Oh, for God's sake! It is an Aldo Safi own goal after 11 minutes. And despite there being two defenders on the line, they've managed to bundle it into their own net. Just, just, mwah, lovely stuff, guys. This is what, this is what dreams are made of. We've, we do score a lot of own goals, don't we? I think we got two in the last episode as well. Austin Chess ball across. And they've, yeah. I mean, why, have, why let him score when you can do it for him? It's genuinely like the Esbjerg game absolutely killed our confidence. Um, and just like the Sundiuska game absolutely built our confidence, morale does seem to be incredibly important this year on FM. One loss and suddenly you just start losing. And one win, all of a sudden you just start winning. Um, it, it's very, very strange. And I wish it wasn't quite so drastic like that. Larison, right, don't let them get another good cross in. He's got space... At the I, I can't believe this. We're not, we're literally not doing anything different to what we've just done in the last sort of five or six matches. Uh, it didn't quite work against Esbjerg, but that's a lovely fit. Look at this. Ah, uh, got to keep it together. <laughs> um, I mean, I know it's probably just us slowly returning to the mean uh, where we're actually supposed to be, but we've played so well in some games and looked really, really good. And then we just come out and play like absolute dog shit. Um, except it was the last game too. And now it's 3-0. And completely deserved, to be perfectly fucking honest. Um, yeah, it's very hot in here as well. Probably not helping the situation with me. Um, very frustrating. Like, these guys are 12th in the league and can barely buy a win. We've been on a really good run lately. And then all of a sudden, just completely capitulate into nothing. It does genuinely seem as if a single defeat just completely kills the team. Because that's what's basically happened. We played really well up until the Esbjerg game. And we got a bit unlucky in that game, perhaps. Look at this! This is incredible. We're 4-0 down in the first fucking half against a team who are, what, 12th in the league? Give me a break. And they deserve it too. But where are my players? Ustenshare, who's supposed to be closed down, tight a mark, whatever, doesn't matter. Scott, edge of the box, bang, 4-0. I mean, what a bunch of whoppers. <laughs> incredible stuff. I'm sweating, that's how angry I am. Do we just stand off in the second half? Can we really do that? Is that something that we even really want to do at this point? Oh, I don't bloody know anymore. It doesn't really matter what we do at this point because we're 4-0 down. We're not going to get back into this game. Like against Kyrgyz, we went 3-0 down, but it looked like we were going to get back into the game the entire match. It wasn't like a, it was against the run of play. If we pulled off something here, it would be a 
absolute shocker. Look at Stephen Gard. Look at everybody, really. Yeah, I'm going to haul him off now. He's an absolute disgrace for that first half, frankly. Like, the defense has been shocking. I grant you, it has. But the strike force has been completely impotent over these last two games. We were very, very fortunate to get anything out of the last match. And right, Zahidi's got the pace to get onto this, you know. He can square it too. Ball in. Oh. Oh, wow. We've actually got on back. And it's Mariano Bravo. One minute into the second half, Mariano Bravo. Zahidi should have squared this much, much better than he did. The pace is evident here. But one touch, now square. If this was any other game, this would have found Gardner easily. But the fact that it comes to Bravo instead, it's a great finish for Mariano Bravo. The only striker who's worth his salt in this team at the moment. Um, we've got a long way to go, is all I'll say. Those two goals before halftime have really killed us. But you never know. Y you do know. Oh, good. Bravo's now injured. Yeah. FM's just like... I think... F <laughs> oh, well. We if you can't laugh, you'll cry. Let's just turn this into a happy thing. Um, except we don't have any more strikers on the bench, so... Oh, yes, we do. We actually do have another striker on the bench, incredibly. I'm going to put Svenningsen in the middle, though, because he's generally better there, I think. If we get another one back, things might get a little bit more interesting, but... It's... Oh, my God, we have as well. Augustine's made it 4-2. So, where was this in the first half, lads? Where, where was this fight? Um, great ball in from Perez. Lovely knockdown from Svenningsen, but this is an incredible finish from Augustine. In off the crossbar. Nets doesn't know what to make of it. It's 4-2. We have at least kept up the record of scoring in every single game so far, and that looked like... Oh, is he going to go? No way! Okay, this is getting interesting now. They're down to 10 men. Surely not. Surely. Right, we're going to move up at midfield, uh, him into midfield as an extra player in there. We're also going to push Santos into attack uh, just to get more and more bodies into those positions. Oh no, come on. No! Oh, now we're down to fucking 10 men. <laughs> this is getting ridiculous now. Sergio Santos sent off for us. Um... Well, <laughs> I, I had a bit of hope for like two minutes. We're still going to go for it. We're going to throw it on overload. 10 v 10. There's going to be loads of space on the pitch. See what we can come up with over the next few minutes of this game. Perez's ball in. Headed away. Coutinho. Augustin. Oh, Moscuzza around the corner. Could have been 4-3 right there. That was the chance. I think we put that in the back of the net and there's some serious problems coming from them in the remaining part of this game. Coutinho, we, we've got a lack of players in the midfield. Gonzalez is in, you know. Can he square it? Svenningsen and it's 4-3. Jonas Sven... Oh, come on, guys. We can do this. If we get an equaliser in this game, this would be unbelievable. Coutinho, this is a gorgeous ball over the top from him. Jose Angel Go Gonzalez goes all the way to the byline, whips this across, and Jonas Svenningsen makes it 4-3. Six minutes to go, plus probably ample stoppage time. Come on, guys, let's have this. Looking long. Zahidi's in, you know. Or can he square it? There's two players open at the far post. He's wide of the goal. He has to square the ball there. He squares the ball there, we're level. All the way out wide for Rogers Jr. Whips it in. Zahidi! Gonzalez! Yes! Absolute limbs. B67-4, Silkborg-4. Fuck me with a fiddle. That is unbelievable. Um, Now, we've got to make sure we change the tactic because otherwise we'll end up conceding at the other end. Zahidi drops it down, squared across from Coutinho, and Gonzalez, right. This might be one of the most entertaining slash ridiculous games of Football Manager I've ever been a part of. Um, And there goes the final whistle. B67-4, Silkborg-4. Two red cards, an own goal, eight... Oh, fucking hell. So, we actually ended up coming eighth uh, in the first half of the season, but that still netted us £750,000. That is ridiculous. Um, because if we can get, like... We could probably get, like, £2 million in prize money this year, plus that. We... The, the, the debt that we're in isn't really going to matter that much, and surely that means in the summer that I'll be able to convince the board to let us turn professional. If we can just keep the, the transfer... Uh, the money sitting nicely. Um, I, I just can't believe that we took... I mean, the thing is, though, if we got some results there, we could have been as high as fifth. I don't know what the prize money is for fifth, but I imagine it's fairly high. Uh, let's have a little look, actually. Um, so this is where I was confused, because it doesn't show prize money here on the preliminary phase. It only shows it on the championship group. Um, so fifth place would have been nearly a million pounds we could have got, but it doesn't matter, because the finances is looking very, very smart. We came from 4-0 down. That is astonishing. Right, so next game is going to be the last few matches before Christmas, essentially, uh, which means Silkeborg in the cup. We've got to play the Bastards again in two days. <laughs> and then we've got a really tough run of fixtures then. So it's Silkeborg in the cup, but then after that, 
Allborg who are second at home, Norgeland who are fourth away, AGF who should be doing better really, that's the only sort of winnable one in there potentially, Midgeland at home, Copenhagen at home, and then Bromby away. So yeah, um, the life comes are going to be Copenhagen and Bromby, but I expect us to start falling down the league a little bit in this interim period. Um, if we can grab a win... I, I don't know where it's going to come from, to be perfectly honest. Maybe away at AGF, although that's still one hell of a task. The other ones is going to be completely up in the air and expect us to be dropping. But then again, if we play as badly as this, we'll lose 9-0 in every game. Right, this episode has probably been stupidly long. Um, so I do apologize for that, but I feel like it's been worth it just for what's just happened in this game. Anyway, if you have enjoyed this, and I really hope you have, just for the comeback, drop a like on the video for the four all draw. Um, never thought I'd be celebrating that. And if you are new to the channel and want to see videos like this, I went from despair to elation in the space of one match. I think that's the most I've ever had a mood swing in FM. I was so grumpy. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.